All right, KMR, and we are back to talk some brap. So we got some cool components laid out. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas, and we're getting to roll into the new year with some great projects. What we have here is uh, an opportunity to take a look at what makes uh, three rotors and four rotors possible, those center bearing carrying plates. And uh, we'll run through it real quick. So I hope everybody enjoys and always comment below. Check out, uh, you know, the KMR shop. We got cool merch and we're working on more. So we just appreciate everybody enjoying this rotary channel. All right. So three rotor center plates, essentially to make a three rotor possible, at least in the OEM configuration, you need a thick plate. And this basically allowed for a strong bearing carrier and stationary gear option. So that allowed you to have your, your rotor timing and your bearing for the center of the shaft because too long of a shaft, too much flex, you just can't have that. You gotta have bearings. The more rotors you go, the more bearings you wanna have. So Mazda was very intentional in their design, a lot of cooling capacity, um, very good oil OEM style flow, um, and very strong in the inherent webbing, thickness, and stationary gear design. A lot of bolts, a lot of land surface area to hold it in. Um, it's actually a pretty strong component. Still considered one of the weaker links in a three rotor, but when you're talking about being able to push 1,000 um, horsepower and drifting, 1500 1800 plus in drag racing i've heard of people getting 2000 plus horsepower um, and then starting to break shafts and uh and plates and components like that but um going beyond that you've got uh billet components that were designed you know for racing and continuing to utilize the thick plate design because of its inherent strength um, when we jump into four rotors you never actually had Mazda produce four rotors that were readily available to the public. So let's just say 99% of all your four rotors that we see today in drifting, drag racing, hooning, car shows, they're aftermarket builds. And how that's done is you're taking a OEM 13B thin plate, kind of like that guy right there if it was aluminum, and then making a bearing carrier that allows you to take an OEM stationary gear that's been modified and insert it in to a OEM thin plate. And we'll go through that a little more. Basically, you can see that it's got some set screws. That's controlling positioning, rotation, timing, because it's setting the timing of your rotor to the shaft lobe. So super critical. I'm, I'm not a machinist. I would not want to do this. I buy these components. I buy them for customers. I buy them for myself. So if anybody needs this stuff, hey, KMR, Mazda Tricks. Back to it though, you're dealing with precise rotor timing um, and end bearing alignment. So it's actually very critical. On the back side, you can see you've got a double snap ring because you're not only snap ringing and set screwing the bearing carrier and gear carrier in, but you've also got to snap ring and hold the actual gear in. So it's a two piece set up um, and the third piece being the plate that allows this whole multiple rotor um, opportunity to happen and this is the same concept right here that's allowing four rotors five rotors six rotors i'm sure somebody's going to do a seven rotor or eight rotor who knows what they're going to put it in but the sky's the limit and the function and functionality of it or the concept of it is this I think for a long time, um, you know, this stuff really wasn't hitting the internet. I think the fear was people would copy it, but over the past 10 years, really I've come to realize it's, it's not a super easy copy. And the people who are doing it are doing it really well at a reasonable price. So I have a tendency to just go with what I know works. And, and I think in this case, that's been what's allowed now for the growth of the rotary industry as we now see uh, billet motors and multi-rotor motors becoming way more available um, and more often being built. 
as we're building one for ourselves for the race program and we're uh, building one through Mazda Tricks for one of our customers. And so point in case right there, we're just seeing more of these motors come about. So pretty cool stuff. If anybody's got questions, let me know. This is obviously a bunch of used components right here. Um, it can be done with new, it can be done with used. New's always better. Um, but in this case, we happen to have this used center plate around and we've done some show and tell recently with it. And I thought this would be a great way to kind of kick off the after Christmas and New Year. Oiling is similarly done to OEM. If you think how the OEM plate is oiled generally through a similar direction, front and rear style uh, bearing, bearing gallery oiling. Um, although it's done externally on the aftermarket four rotors, it's a similar concept coming down in through what would be a freeze plugged area with the tube down into a directed hole that's on the OEM stationary gear. We'll uh, talk about this stuff more. I'm sure people are gonna have questions. I may not even know all the answers. So I look forward to seeing what people think. And my hope is that by talking about this more, um, building one for myself, building more for customers, that we'll actually see these components uh, become more available and maybe people will even figure out ways to uh, recreate, redesign, make things stronger, make things more available because that's what we need in the rotary industry is we need more people out there pushing the limits, creating new components and basically having a good time with the brap. And I think that's a brap. I got to clean this table up. I got to get back to porting, get the lapping table back on. And, uh, you know, just get the daily general brap rap grind going. Thanks for watching. KMR.